I, he's playing fucking bingo. I can't fucking, I can't get him on the podcast if he's literally playing bingo right now. He is you playing bingo. Let me tell you a quick story about bingo. Last time I played bingo, I went up there like six months ago. Uh, I spent like 60 bucks total, and I won $250. So it was like a $50 jackpot, but if you hit the number, it was like times five of what you won or something like that. I brought home like 250 bucks. It was great. I love gambling. But what the fuck going on, people, here? Yo, in- hey. Uh, here's our very well scheduled podcast. Um, um, I've decided that we're going to call it Marvin's Room instead. <laughs> That's sick. I do love that. That's way cooler, to be fair. I'm always in. I waited that. so long to tell you for this reason. So mad about that already. And so it'll be called Marvin's Room featuring ADS. That's kind of, dude, that's probably the hardest thing I've ever heard in my life, actually. So that's I know. Funny. I knew you'd love it. Yeah. And so I just wanted to wait and pop you with it on the podcast. So, all right, dude. Hell yeah. It's awesome. Um, here's the thing we are new lee crowned tag team champions hang on a second hang on yeah i'm I'm with you dude (laughs) run 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 rudolph it feels good it just makes sense is this the we do the the stern face though? That's our new like match graphic. Like it'll just be that. That'd be awesome. It'll probably look so bad, and I love it. Yeah. So, what the fuck we've been? What what have you been going uh, and doing, Chris Crump? What has been your life this week? Dude, the best part is I took the whole weekend off. <laughs> really? Oh uh, yeah, money. And I did it on purpose uh, because uh, I don't know if you realize our schedule is kind of full for the next like while. Because uh, even like just New South alone has so many April shows. Did you notice that? Yeah, I did notice a lot more than usual. Like the last time I felt like we had this is when action class was like taped it hands full like all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, we're going to be a little busy. Uh, yep. So I take this weekend off, which was cool. Um, yep. Today I woke up, did Nothing. I went to the flea market with my friends, and they do this thing called the Chattanooga Market downtown. Saw some cool shit. Bought some cool candles. Um, Love then, candles. Yeah, dude, they smell good. Um, then I watched the. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Doesn't show it. I have oh, this you, one right. you gotta turn your background blur off. No, I fucking did it. Be all right. Well, this shit right here is pink watermelon, and it's probably the greatest smelling candle ever. And I also have one over there that's strawberry cheesecake. I love strawberry cheesecake, and that smell, money. Oh, dude, check this out, too. This is, like, real... This is a stack of our new gear. Oh, fuck yes, dude. And we can't tell anybody what it is, but it is the coolest gear of all time. It literally is probably going to be, like, the hardest gear of all time. I think yes, so. Sir. So we're going to wear that... Uh, at the, I think in the next show we'll wear, like, the purple pair, and then after that yep. we'll, debut the, we'll debut the main event pair. The main event pair is the coolest thing ever. I also watched a uh, video on that whole thing today, which just, it'll make sense later on. I'll tell y'all next time we're in the podcast, like, why it's cool. Anyways, uh, fuck, dude. I've been so bored all day. I've literally, like, you, same thing you did. I've just been doing absolutely nothing. I've sit here. I have, I woke up, didn't have to work today. Watch the beautiful little girl. And we have this new, like, little, it's not little, it's like a big playpen that she has, like, a little ball pit. And she hates it. Absolutely <laughs> hates it, dude. We paid, like, 120 bucks for it. And we thought it was perfect. And she gets in that thing, and she does not like it. So, Fuck the ball pit, but that's been my day. Literally that, I ate, I made, like, some chicken, and I made some pigs in a blanket. Because I always, I, after I wrestle, I try to eat, like, real shitty, just because, like, I look like shit, don't get me wrong, but I still try to, like, eat decently. I mo- mostly like chicken. I usually just cook, like, chicken tenders, and I season them and shit, and I'll eat just that throughout the week. But after I wrestle, or the night of I've wrestled, I treat my body like shit, and then I'll go back when I go back to work uh, eating good. So that's been my day. Eating and watching my child. But they are gone right now at some kind of family gathering. I will tell you a funny story. So, Kenzie was walking in the fucking, in a different room. She walks in the room, it's Avery's room, and there's a door in there that we haven't put up yet because there's just no door on it. We wanted to put a door up for her. So, I'm in here chilling with Avery on the couch, and we're just chilling out here. Boom. I was like, what the fuck? You know, and I like walk in there, and she's like on the ground, face down, door on top of her. And I was like, what did you do? And she's like, it just fell on top of me. And she's like, oh, mad. So that's like my funny story for the day. And she's like, she's made like this big joke about her having CT and stuff like that, which is not funny. So nobody take that and think I'm being a dick. But it was real funny. It was real. Uh, I, I, I've been, 
uh, the second half of You on Netflix. Oh my God. Jesus fucking Christ. What a great ending, right? Like, Thanks. don't do that. We're not, we'll fight right now if you shit on it because it was like, no, 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 first no. Five... listen. So, first five episodes, good. Okay. Then, like, the next three, like, I, I picked up the twist pretty early of like that he was just like crazy and like that other guy didn't really exist. Like, I, I started to like, up beforehand. No. No, I swear. You can ask Kylie. Like, she even looked at me. She goes, she goes, she goes, that sucks. Like, you figured it out. And I was like, yeah, dude, it sucks. And so I was like upset. I was like, man, what a terrible way to end this season as Joe. Cause like the whole point is like the reason why Joe Goldberg is so cool is because he's a good guy. He just has to do some real bad things to keep his life afloat. You know what I mean? And so like yeah, yeah. at the end there, like, Two episodes before it ended, they made him the bad. Like he was a bad guy because he mm. had like this whole time kidnapped Marianne and like had her in the glass chamber. I hope and nobody's I, not watched you. If you if you haven't watched the five episodes, I would I would skip up like at least like thirty minutes because probably we're going to be talking about most of this time. Honestly, like that's I can talk about this shit all day. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, dude. And so uh, I was like upset because I was like, oh no, they made him the bad guy. Like he for real, like brutally murdered Marianne. Like that sucks. And mm-hmm. then they like, dude, the the way to clean it up and like make it cool at the end. Super I do cool. like no uh so the return of like Beck and Love was like a real big plot. Obviously it was in his dreams, but it was just cool to see him again, right? So that was real sick. But I will say this the first five episodes that come out, it was in February, to me were garbage. Like it was like like, there were a couple of cool, like, oh, that's cool, but it didn't feel like you. Like, nothing about it felt like a good show. It seemed like they were just, like, playing, not even playing the hits. Like, they done went past their hits, and now they just got to the point where it's, like, almost like a WWE in, like, 2011 type deal. Like, it was just, like, really boring and just fucking, like, whatever. Because they just weren't doing anything. But then they started back. Well, they did the thing where, so how did the last five episodes end? I think it was, uh, had, he pulled him out of the, they pulled him out of the fire, and then, is that how it ended? Yeah. Like, that's it. Like, he knows that. The other guy's the killer, and he pulled out of the fire, and now he's like, I got to figure out how to kill this other guy. So he pulls him out, and we're trying to figure out what the dude is. So I had no idea that that was the plot twist. And to me, what a great plot twist. Like, to me, on the opposite end, I would have never thought that. I just thought that maybe that guy was in the, like, he had the same exact personality as Joe, which he does, obviously, because that's, like, the whole story. He is Joe. But I thought whenever he went in there and he killed the mayor, that when him saying, like, oh, I don't know what's going on, blah, 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 was the same thing as Joe when Joe would, like, trance out and he would go back into being normal Joe, you know? I thought that was, like, his version of that. So then I saw the ghost dude come around, and he was like, oh, uh, you killed me. You, t- you strangled my nuts or whatever. Like, oh, my God, that's so crazy. And then they did the plot twist where they're revisiting everything, and it's him just talking to himself and him doing it. And I was like, oh, my God. And then it showed the girl walking in the thing, like, finding the key. Because she's a sneaky little girl anyways. Like, so you kind of knew she was going to figure something out. But that was the last thing. I had no idea that they were going to bring the cage. Like, that's, like, the most, like, Joe gimmick of all time. Like, that's his, like, hell in a cell, obviously. And I think that is so dope. But in my head, you know, logically, I don't ever think logically. But here's what I was thinking. How the fuck did he get that thing over to London? That's what I was like, how in the fuck did this guy bring that to London? But uh, super dope. And then they do the whole rerun where he gives her the coffee. She drinks it. She's fucking dying. Oh, my God. But then they play the part where this motherfucker is alive at the end. The plot twist where she's on the bench and she goes and fucking saves her, plaster with the needle or whatever, and she's alive. Like, holy shit. Like, I, I'm telling you, greatest to me, top top show on Netflix, like, of all time. May, maybe ever for me. I love you. I think it's, like, the greatest show ever. There's, like, there's only, like, one show that I ever thought was better than that one on Netflix, and it's a show called The OA. Like, O is in orange and A is in apple. And so it was called, it's called the OA and there was two seasons of it and it, it, well, maybe there's three, but there's like, it got canceled after a while, but that show is like banging. It puts you to shame and it's like really <laughs> detailed and like uh twisty like that. And like, I don't know, that show fucked me up watching it. So I was like, I miss it, but you is definitely like the next one. Like that's the show now. Have you ever seen the show? I think it's called the society. I could be wrong. It's like one season. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's something where these kids go on a field trip. The beginning of the show is these kids leaving school for a field trip. So they go on the field trip, and I, I think they all fall asleep or something, and they wake up and they do what? It like goes off a cliff. 
No, 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 that'd be crazy, but no. They they end up in this like complete they they're in the they have the bus, right? And they drive and they wake up and they're in this like world. I don't remember if it's like their school. It's been a while since I've seen it, but it's like their school and they end up somewhere, but like all their parents are gone. There's nothing going on. Like they literally have to make their own society. And it's just the kids and they're trying to figure out how to get back to like where they were from. And they don't know what's going on. They don't know how it went. But it, it honestly is real sick. The only shitty part is it also got canceled after one season. And it made me so mad because it's such a good show and has such a good cliffhanger. Because there's this other show that I don't remember um, what it was called, but it started off and it was kids on a bus. And for some reason, the bus like went off a cliff and like all the kids died. But then like three days later, they were all just like back. And all the parents were like confused, like how the fuck did these kids come back? And like that also was only one season. I forgot what it was called, though. So that's why I thought that. But. That was well, a lot of good shows. That's what we're gonna go down. There's like, uh, uh, fuck. It's like walk on the block, something uh, on the block. I think it's just called on the block actually. And it's like a, it's more of like a, a teen drama type deal. But it's really good. I think it's really good. It's about these kids trying to find this gold, and it leads into this whole deal of this brother getting shot. I don't know. It's just really good. So on the block's another recommendation. Definitely check that out. And then uh, one more I would say to check out is uh, Making of a Murder. I haven't watched it, but it was like the rave for everybody. Dude, there was this it, one, I can't remember the name of it, but it got canceled after one season. It was so good. Oh, fuck. Everybody oh. also watched the the McDonough, McDonough, I don't know what it's called. But it's like the rave right now. What is that? It's like the, you don't know what I'm talking about? I really don't know. It's some kind of, it's the same thing as like every killer documentary of all time where this dude like kills his family or something. But I haven't, me and Kenzie like laid on the couch, we watched it for like, Two minutes and I fell asleep. But I heard it's like the, the wave right now. I don't know. Love good there, TV. There was this one. Uh, what was it called? God, dude, I'm like drawing blanks on all of this. But there's like something that I've watched recently that are like really good. But then some most of them are just canceled, which like breaks my heart. Because I'm like, man, I'll for, see the OA. Okay, I'm just reading through a list right now to try to figure it out. Mm. Uh, the top like canceled Netflix show. The OA was on there. Um, God, what was this one called? It was about these like two uh, kids, and at the very end, like one of the kids like heads explodes and they die because the other one has powers. And I was like, what the fuck? Oh my God. <laughs> oh, mm, it's like driving me nuts. Oh, I am not okay with this. Have you ever watched that? No. Dude, that shit was amazing. One season canceled and i was just like what the okay. fuck? that's the show you're talking about right oh i just found that society show too yeah good as fuck i, I just looked up to make sure that's what it was and it is it's great i'm telling you it's a great show why i got canceled, hey, I'll, I have no- I'll tell you the worst canceled netflix show what is that the big show show yeah wait it was a show where it was about the big show you no really- no I- talking about it. i'm saying you're saying the worst show is you mean like it you're saying it's the worst show it was a great show because i thought it was garbage uh, to be honest i've never watched it but i it was on this list and so that's what reminded me of it because i i forgot all about it yeah so same thing is like holy is it holy foley oh, was the other one netflix it was just on like wb uh on uh wb network right and i the coolest thing ever uh for like the first episode and then I started watching it, and I was like, man, if you make a wrestling show and I don't like it, that's how you know it's bad. Because I'll watch anything wrestling. I don't care. But the Big Show show, yeah, Garbo. And then the Holy Foley show was both garbage. I'll tell you another show that's really good. It has its ups and downs, but Riverdale. I feel like I've, I feel like I've said this on here, but I could be wrong. But Riverdale is about, like, uh, it's like these kids, and it's apparently like a comic book series of Archie or some shit, but it's not. I don't know. I don't know, like, anything about that. But it's these series, and this dude's fucking... Uh, Archie's like the main character, and then it's like real teen drama, witches, and blah, 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 blah. They end up getting Sabrina the Teenage Witch in it. Uh, COVID happens, and then, like, when COVID happens, not on the show, but, like, in real life, they switch up the fucking casting. Not casting, but the the storyline, so they end up in, like, this futuristic deal, and it kind of ruined everything by, like, season four. But then, the last season, uh, maybe season six or five, uh, it got really good again. So that's another one I'd say to check out. Oh, dang, I just see where the, like, I'm just reading, still reading through this cancel list, and one of the shows that cancels that Resident Evil show, and I remember I was so fucking mad when that show came out because I absolutely love Resident Evil the game, and that show was ass. So I'm so happy right now because apparently it's canceled. I've never seen that. I've, I've known the game, but I didn't know that was a show. I yeah. heard it was that, 
What about the Last of Us movie? Everybody's been talking about that, but I have not seen it. Uh, no, it's, probably- it's like a it's a show about the game, um, and it's apparently good. I just don't like the game. Oh, really? Yeah, like I think it kind of sucks, but I don't like uh, story games like that where like uh, you don't really get to control the character. You just kind of pick pick and choose what you do. I don't like that. We don't really have a self. Look at this fucking thing. Yeah, I did see that, and the dude put Dank Magician, and I was thinking like how cool of a nickname that is. And it's a ten piece. Did you could did you buy that, or did you like have it and then got it sent off in the package? I've obtained it. Is what I'll say. So now it's my most prized. See you, man. Now it's my most prized possession. That's cooling off. But do you have this? <laughs> the signed <laughs> Adam Cup card that I got in like eighth grade. It was great. That's pretty uh, cool. Yeah, definitely the coolest thing ever. I have a, I have my collection here somewhere. I don't know where I fucking put them. Let me see if I can find these bad guys. I know, like, the top card is always, like, the flex. I open it, Monster Reborn right on top. That's all I'm saying. It's always useful. I, the, I don't know where the fuck they're at. I'll find them one day. I have one. Like, it's uh-huh. not a part of the buzz. I have a bunch of decks somewhere. I just don't know where they're at. I just don't play it anymore. I haven't played it in fucking years. Let's talk about something good. Like, what can we talk about that's kind of interesting? Because the yeah. Netflix has made some good material here. I'll tell you... Um... One thing that's uh, got me pumped, and that is the fact that like WWE is really good right now. Um, mm. And so like it's like the first time. Not that I don't get pumped for WrestleMania, because I always get pumped for WrestleMania, because it's WrestleMania. But it's like the first time in a while that I've been like, oh fuck, like these are gonna be some matches, dog. Like this is gonna be sick, you know? Like I don't know if that makes sense, but it makes sense. No, I, I, yeah, yeah. And it's real cool too because it, it so. It's like legends, legends, legends in my head. Because it was Cena coming out, right? And he did the thing. And he was like, yo, fucking uh, Austin Theory, I'm going to wrestle you at WrestleMania. Which we knew that was going to happen. But that's still, like, so dope. Because it wasn't, nothing's ever for sure in wrestling, you know? But that was, like, super cool. And then I don't know if it was the same night or that Monday following. But then Trish is like, hey, I'm also going to be a Mania with Lita. With Like, that's so cool. Like, that's WrestleMania 21 as fuck in my head. Yeah, dude, uh, there's shit coming. Uh, I'm like... Uh, I don't know. I'm just real pumped to see. And I really wish, I don't think it'll happen, but I really wish that that tag match that'll probably be like the Usos versus Kevin and Sammy, which is all we assume is going to happen. Mm. I really wish that that was the, the main event of night one. You don't think it will be? I don't. I think it'll end up being Rhea and Charlotte. Charlotte, yeah. That's what it is. Uh, not even because of like women's movement or anything like that. It's because like the whole point of the Royal Rumbles is if you win a Royal Rumble, you're in the you main event. WrestleMania. And so now with there being two nights of WrestleMania, it mm-hmm. kind of writes itself every year of yeah. like, hey, this is going to be the deal. But I really wish like just because it's only happened like because it's only happened once, right? A uh, tag match is main event of WrestleMania. It was main event one or it was WrestleMania one. Sorry. It was uh, it's the only time, and so like I just think that'd be really cool. Well, especially with that kind of story, because like uh, it's like the biggest thing in wrestling right now. Like you have like a lot of other cool things, like MJF super dope, and I think his match with Brian Danielson at Revolution was like top fucking tier, great match, love that so much. But like obviously the Bloodline shit is like the most ever thing right now. But also yeah. the Divas do deserve, or the women do deserve a, a main event spot. So like you're right, like it does suck, but I do really believe that they. Also deserve maybe they'll be like semi main, not two. I feel like it'll be like maybe Usos, Kevin Owens and Sammy, then Cody and Roman. Do you think Cody beats Roman? Because I don't. Um, I think so. You think it has to happen? I think so. I think there's really no other way you can go with it right now. Unless Roman just keeps it. I think well, here's how my head thinks. So I feel like it'll be like some kind of shit will happen, like maybe not, but this is like just wishful thinking to where Roman will defend the WWE title, but he won't defend the Universal Championship because his record, I'm pretty sure, is for the Universal title. Like that's like what they built to. But uh-huh. Cody's whole, he's trying to fight for the WWE title because that's what his dad didn't ever win, uh, and he never got to hold it, so he wants to make his dad proud and blah blah blah. So the WWE title was more important than the Universal title. Obviously, they're both one title now. But we all, at least for me, I very much wish that they would separate them and make them two separate titles again because it's always just better that way. Here's some – so there's, like, a bunch of positives and negatives to that to me. I think that the show 
is more better with separated to- separated titles. Uh, just because, like, I miss the old days of, like, where Raw and SmackDown competed and, like, Every once in a while when he got to, like, Survivor Series or whatever, like, the Raw champion would walk in and the SmackDown champion would walk in, and they would kind of, like, cut up a little bit with one another and, like, talk about how, like, they're both, like, the the main event guys. I always like that. Um, But also, I do like the idea of there just being, like, one solid, like, hey, this is your main event guy. And so I'm kind of, like, back and forth. If they go back to, like, for real split rosters, like, this is your SmackDown roster, this is your Raw roster, and you don't see those guys on both shows, I'm all about separated championships. If it's the thing where, like, everybody is on both shows, like, I don't like having two titles because then what's the <laughs> fucking point? Sorry. That's okay, dude. But I do agree. I think that's, like, uh, I don't know, like, the cool thing to me about wrestling in that scenario is it's, like, uh, Either way, there's a main champion. Like, even, like, when there were two separate champions, like, there's always that A-plus champion and that B-plus champion, right? So I don't think that, like, really matters. But I do like, uh, like, different titles. If they put more importance on the IC and the U.S. title now, but there's just a lot more importance to where, like, the IC championship's being ran by Gunther, Gunther, whatever, however you say his name. And everybody loves that. Like, it's so sick. Triple H did these, like, promos to where he was, like, putting over the history of the IC title. And then I think he did the same thing with the U.S. title. But Austin Theory's obviously been, like, running shit and once he beats i feel like he beats cena at mania once he okay. beats cena at u.s title that puts that title back to a main event status which that title is never like main event but it makes it important you know instead of it just being like here's the champion here's yeah. the champion because it hasn't really main event at a pay-per-view i think they made a minute the last time i made a pay-per-view was like seth rollins versus dean ambrose for the current title yeah jesus christ was it that long ago really like was that 2013 probably that's on that the ic title man invented a pay-per-view and then before that i don't it's probably been forever if not forever um because they for real like kind of crap on that belt sometimes yeah. but then but then you also have those times where they do make it really important so like i feel like the last i feel like the only time it was considered like a world title was like back in like the 90s when razor held it or like Mr. Perfect held it, or Bret Hart held it. Like, that, to me, is, like, world titles and intercontinental titles. Yeah. Not even, like, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins thing. I think that was it. But now you have... God damn it. I watched, uh, I watched Survivor Series 96 last night. And, uh... Is that, what was the main event in 96? Uh, 96 is Sid Vicious versus Shawn Michaels. But, dude, it's got the fake Diesel and fake Razor Ramon on it, and I fucking love it, dude. So, also, Flash Funk, dude, is balling. This dude oh, here, yeah. comes out like this is that's his debut, is uh, the 96 Survivor Series. He comes out, he's got two like really hot black girls with him. They're walking to the ring with him. He's just like, he's like doing this choreograph, like kind of dance entrance with them, which is like super new for the time. He's got this dope ass pimp outfit on. And then, like, in the master, he's doing some wash. He did the moonsault that you do off the top to the outside in like 96. I'm not saying that no one had ever done that before because, like, like a talk of Michinoku and shit like that existed. But just like on American television, crazy. Yeah, for sure. And he did well, it on I- Vader. How the fuck in the back was he like, listen, Vader, I know it's my first night here, but I'm going to do this fucking flip all the time. You know, catch me. And then he just does it. You know, that's what I would do. Hit it. Fuck it. Just fucking hit it. Uh, I do think. So is that the is ninety six the one where Rock debuts also? Yeah, it's Rock's debut. Okay. God, dude, I feel like I should watch a lot more old wrestling because I just don't know about any of that. I know the Rock like single handedly eliminated everybody or something like that. Yeah. Well, I i i grew up in that era so like i know a lot of it but i'm just going back and like revisiting it because i've watched the one i've watched like 2001 through 2003 so many times that like my eyes will bleed and then i've definitely watched everything past that a lot so like i'm I'm trying to go back further and just kind of like i don't know get more appreciation for like the beginning of like americanized wrestling Mm -hmm. which probably something now, I kind of agree with that. So, like, uh, I'm stuck in the middle of something. And I haven't even started it yet. That's, like, I don't know why I haven't. But, like, I watch a lot of, like, 97 through 99. And I watch a lot of 2001. Love 2001. And then, like, 2005, 2007. And usually, like, that's just my go-tos, right? 
But I want to watch 2000. That's the year I was born, and I don't ever like watch it. Now, I do know some like really cool main events. So, like, the Armageddon Hell in a Cell was like goaded. You got one of the main events, I'm pretty sure, it was like Chris Benoit, Kurt Angle, and maybe like Triple H or something. Maybe Jerick. It was somewhere in that area. Uh, so, like, full. And then you got uh, SummerSlam 2000, where fucking Taker takes off Kane's mask, and that's like a big thing, which nobody talks about. And that's like the only thing I would pop for, but I think it's cool. But like stuff like that, I don't ever watch. And I don't know why I always skip over 2000, other than. I always hear the WrestleMania is really bad. I can't tell you if I've ever watched the full WrestleMania 2000. I've watched almost every WrestleMania from like mm-hmm. probably, and I don't think I've ever watched that full one ever. That's that dope Fatal Four Way main event, which is what is it? Big Show, Rock, Mankind, Triple H, Yo, Jimmy, hit yeah. me with it. Yep, right. and every every single one of them has a McMahon in their corner for some reason. Oh, that's so good. Of course, that's cool though. Yeah, I it's think like it's a very. Really- I think the the visual of that place looks really cool. I don't know what it, I think the colors of the black and green WrestleMania is like super sick, but I just, I haven't checked it out. You know what WrestleMania like? If you think of the WrestleMania main events, like the one that like stands out to me is like I think that like it's the most random WrestleMania main event of all time is uh, WrestleMania 11 um, because the main event is Bam Bam Bigelow versus um, okay. Lawrence Taylor. Like, so you got to think, like, the ones before that was always, like, Bret Hart versus Joe Kazuna or, like, Hulk Hogan okay. versus Slaughter or Hulk Hogan versus Randy Savage. So it's just, like, main eventers, main eventers, main eventers, main eventers. And this one, they're just like, dude, it's Bam Bam fucking Bigelow and it's Lawrence fucking Taylor. <laughs> they're having a match, too. <laughs> I thought that was, like, way earlier. That was, that, that was the fucking main event of the show. <laughs> oh, see, I thought that was, like, in, like... Like, WrestleMania, like, seven or something. Like, I'm terrible. Like, I know Hogan may have been in most of those, but, like, I had no idea that was WrestleMania. That's crazy. Seems like such a really old fucking show. Is that not the one that 11 is where Taker beat Nash or Taker beat King Kong Monday? No? Would you know that? 13 is where he won. Let me go through my head. At 11, he wrestled King Kong Bundy because that's when he has Ted Ted DiBiase with it. Bingo. Yep. And yeah. random fucking he goes out there and he's got the chain and it's the iron now. How cool is that? What Dude, a that, random fuck. That ninety six Survivor series, it's uh Undertaker versus Mankind and Mankind has Paul Bear and they put Paul Bear in a shark cage and raise it above the ring. And mm-hmm. that match is like pretty balling. Is that not the one where Taker flies down with the bat wings, right? Mm mm. Huh? Just it's like apparently the first time because like on commentary they were just putting over that he was wearing black. They were like, "Oh, look at Taker, he's wearing all black." And I was like, "Dang, this must be like a big like change." Okay. Uh, and like the match itself, pretty balling. Like they did some pretty like wild shit. Plus, there's a really good Stone Cold versus Bret Hart match on there, which is also balling. Not the not the not the famous one where like he passes out. <laughs> just another one like where they just wrestled again. And it's also super good. And like the finish is uh, Stone Cold's put in the million dollar dream, and Bret Hart kicks off the fucking turnbuckle and does the roll up. That's awesome. Fuck yeah. yeah and it's like, it's so cool because you see that all the time now. Like people, like, like especially like Samoa Joe matches and shit like that, people that use like a sleeper old finish. Like you see that all the time now. So it's just like really cool to see like how, uh, obviously, it's probably older than that. Um, it's just like cool to see how old these finishes and shit like this is and how it like still works to this day because you can use that finish to this day and it'll still get the whoa, like, oh, fuck. Yep, 100% agree. I think it's real cool to see. Okay, so like the old school wrestling thing to me is just, uh, I think it is really cool to see how they're different than like how we call wrestling now. So like I obviously call my wrestling is either like the most dangerous fucking match of all time or just like super like, I'm not going to give all my secrets here or whatever. You probably figured it out. But, like, uh, I'm, I, they just do stuff that's, like, so different. And the way they react, like, in the moment and do stuff in the moment. Like, I wish that was, like, how a lot of wrestling was now. And I think there are wrestlers who do that. Like, there are a lot of wrestlers who can really do that. But there's also a lot of wrestlers now who are just, like, we're just all choreographing. Which is, that's mostly my shit. Like, I just choreograph pretty much everything. But, like, that stuff where, like, Taker fucking flips his hair up and he looks at the referee and he goes out and he's walking to Mankind. Mankind's like, oh, no. Like, like, stuff, you know, you don't, I don't guess you would call that stuff in the back. I'm sure some stuff, but, like, stuff that's just very, like, whatever. And stuff you can just tell is, like, they just do. And they hit it, and it just works. And it's, I don't know, super cool. Uh, what do you think the most random main event other than that WrestleMania main event from, like, an early time? Do you have another one that you can think of? Uh, 
That's just weird. Yeah. Some of the just like, what the fuck? Um, besides... Let me see if I can look. I just can't really think. Like, the most random ones are... That Bateman Bigelow one just throws me off because it's like, at the time, like, Bateman Bigelow wasn't a main eventer. Lawrence Taylor, obviously not a wrestler. He was just a really famous football player. And so, like, like this? Sure. Uh, it was just the time where, like, they started doing stuff like that. Um, I guess, like, six is weird because it's at – it's in Canada. Like, it's crazy they did, like, a Canadian uh, WrestleMania so early. Mm. I think that's super dope, though. It is super cool. It's just, like, interesting because, like – and then they haven't went back there since. Canada? Yeah, they haven't had a WrestleMania in Canada since, I don't think. Um, and mm. that's, like, that's real interesting that, one, they did it so early, and then they just, like, never went back. <laughs> they were just like, hey. Was, on, WrestleMania 18 was in Canada. Was it? I'm pretty sure. 16, uh, oh, that's the one where uh, it's Rock versus Hogan? Mm. Yep. Okay, never mind. There. Okay. My bad. You good. So I'm looking through like ignore that whole point. point Yokozuna, which is like I think that's cool. I do and I I do like the finish of WrestleMania 10 Bret Hard Yokozuna. And I saw it the other day where it's just Yokozuna literally just falls off the rope, right? Like super random, but it, like it works so well because he's such a big guy. He goes for his bonsai drop, but he just slips off the rope. And Bret Hart just covers him one, two, three. And that to me was like you know, you would to me, like if I was calling it, I'd be like, dude, I'll fucking kick in the nuts and fucking write like some dumb shit. But that was so simple. And I was like, it really does make sense because he's using his weight against him. He's such a big guy that when he hits, it is going to create like a, a massive fucking impact. And Bret Hart just beats him. Like, I thought that was so sick. That is my, that is one of my favorite WrestleMania finishes of all time. I got Diesel versus Psycho Sid in your house, uh, May of 1995. It's in your house. Doesn't say, it just says 1995. Uh, okay, I'll start burying some fucking people real quick, man. Okay. Hey. Hey, like dude. Per- Sid Vicious. Not like personally, like, or not like professionally, like, he's like, whatever, I'll politic or whatever, but like, I definitely, like, do not like his wrestling. I think he was, like, cool for, like, what I've seen. Like, he almost reminded me of, like, Brian Pillman, I guess. Super crazy and shit like that, but I thought he was always garbage. Like, any match he was in, I was not watching. I don't think I've ever watched a Sid Vicious match. Maybe the taker and him at 13. But that's, like, the most I've ever watched Sid Vicious. Psycho Sid. Oh, and then the video of him jumping and breaking his leg was, like, one of the most famous wrestling things of all time. Like, when you were a kid. But, like, I've never watched this stuff, ever. He's a, he's yeah. a mean-ass powerbomb. Yeah, his powerbomb was sick. Like, it is super cool. Also, I looked up top ten worst uh, WWE main events of all time. There's, like, three with Psycho Sid so far, which is real funny. Dude, I just looked up. Four. <laughs> Four. You said uh, in your house. I looked up the in your house main events, dude. So let me read you the first three in your, well, the first four in your house main events. It's yeah. Diesel versus Psycho Sid. Sid. Number two, Diesel versus Psycho Sid. Uh, three is the two dudes with attitudes, which is Diesel and Shawn Michaels versus Yoko Zuda and British Bulldog. The next one is Diesel versus British Bulldog. <laughs> My boy Diesel was running the shit, dude. Like that's awesome. Do you have a, uh, do you have a, when you were younger, uh, in your house that really stuck out to you, or at least like a match or anything? Mine is, uh, it's Mick Foley and Shawn Michaels. I remember as a kid watching that match on the Shawn Michaels DVD, and I always thought that match was so effing good. I gotta go stand the F word so much. I understand, dude. Uh, my favorite, my, probably they did this, because I was like a big Vader guy. Like, I loved Vader when I was a kid. My first favorite wrestler is fucking Vader. I don't know why. I just thought Vader was so cool. So when I was little, the first action figure I got was like the the Vader or whatever those figures are called where they don't bend or can't do anything. Or was able to move. It's the one where it doesn't move and it's just like doing this. And I had I had that and the Hulk Hogan and I would wolf that Hulk Hogan's ass and Vader all the time. And they did this, uh it's like uh Jim Cornette's team, which is Vader. And Owen Hart and British Bulldog, and they wrestled uh, Psycho Sid, Shawn Michaels, and somebody else. I think uh, Ahmed Ahmed Johnson. Mm. Um, and I don't know why, but that's like, I think that's the first in your house I ever saw. 
I've never watched The Fool in your house, I don't think. I, just because they're so old. I also really like to, like, of course, I'm going to say every Taker match possible, but uh, Undertaker and McFoley is really good. And, and, like, a certain thing that I always remember in my head and I always wondered is, so, like, Mick Foley took this bump off the side. Like, he was on the apron. Taker, like, hits him. I don't know if he hit him with stairs, if he just hit him, I can't remember, but he hit him, and he jumps off the ring, and he goes through the announcer table, but not, like, through the announcer table like normal. Like, his head digs in the announcer table, almost like he, like, jumped into a hole, and, like, half his ass is sticking out the top, and he's just, like, stuck upside down in this announcer table, and I always thought that was, like, so cool. Oh, that fucking, so that two dudes with attitudes versus Yokozuna and the British Bulldog. That match is for the WWF title, the WWF Intercontinental title, and the WWF Tag Team titles. And that's when Dudes with Attitudes won the Tag Team titles, I assume? Yeah, how crazy, dude. That is wild. That's so cool. They just took all that shit in one match. I remember I watched a documentary, and they were talking about it, and they were like, <laughs> I think they were in the back, and they were talking to Vince or whatever, and they was like, so... So we just went out the titles, and then uh, Vince was like, well, it's going to get you heat with everybody. And then I was like, ah, oh, fuck it, it'll be okay. And they said they remember, like, walking around and everything being so toxic because they were the champs of everything. But Shawn Michaels was the guy at the time, so fuck it. I can't find anything. I'll just do this. Top 10. Dude, worst. In your house, 13? Guess where mm-hmm. it's at? Chattanooga, Tennessee. Guess what the main Bret- event is? Bret Hart versus Stone Cold versus Undertaker versus Vader. Damn, dude, that's sick. You, so you know the why that happened? Do you remember this? No. So what happened is, is it was a fatal four way because uh, something happened where they couldn't figure out who was going to face the champ at the time. I think it was, I guess, Bret Hart, who was trying to face Bret Hart for the title or whatever it was. And so this was the match that was whoever won it would face Bret Hart at WrestleMania. And that's, that's the reason. They Bret Hart. <laughs> Do what? Oh, he's in it? Fuck, okay, not him. It's a... Uh, like wait, who's all in it? Wait, sorry, I was trying to type. It's Undertaker, Bret Hart, Undertaker, Stone Cold, and Vader. Okay, well they're fake. They're going to face whatever, dude. He said, "Let me tell you exactly why this match just happened." <laughs> Don't you know better than listen to me on anything, dude? I got to bullshit up here, dude. You're I don't fuck with people, dude. I fucking I have fucking. Oh no, this is a different one. Uh, so this is Undertaker versus Stone Cold over the Edge ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I do understand why that's shitty because like Owen died and I do believe they should have stopped the show you know I feel like that would be like in any situation if somebody dies like especially in ring that show should be stopped right there uh, unless, unless I mean, just keep that shit going yeah well I thought they were talking about the Undertaker and Stone Cold uh, first blood match and that match was so sick so fuck them if that if that is what they were talking about but it wasn't Daniel Bryan versus Randy Orton 13, Kurt Angle versus Mark Henry. The only thing I remember about that is like the English slam through the table. Lex Luger is another one. Not a big fan of Lex Luger. Like, <laughs> seems like a this cool guy. Like, we're making a whole podcast of us just reading <laughs> matches. <laughs> dude, you love me, fuck. That's what I'm just, I'm just looking through them, dude. Okay. I, like, I love it. I feel like someone's going to watch this and be like, this fucking sucks. I hate these guys. They're for real just talking yeah, about. I, but it's okay. It's because we don't have Brighton Tune here. We don't have our, th- our freaking like match. We need our guy to like. Bingo, bro. Saying B I N G O. It must be fucking nice. It must be fucking nice. But I do agree. Podcast does suck, but you know what? It doesn't matter because people love us regardless. It I did want to ask. He it doesn't. Me. I just I just think it's funny because like I imagine like somebody like clicking this. They're like, oh dude, I'm about to get some deep insight from the Akuto Desani. We're just like, yeah, the main event of Backlash 2004. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like, why? They fucking, you know why? Because they love this shit. That's why. Fuck them, dude. Did, did uh, love. Did them. our do well? Can I ask that? Huh? Did our shirts do well? Is ADS shirts? So far, you know, yeah. not bad. I'm like, oh, okay. But if you uh, want to buy more. Oh, please, dude, please. Because, uh, so let me just say some stuff right here. If you've made it this far, 40 minutes in, let me say this. No way. <laughs> it's ADS forever. And when I say ADS forever, I mean, we'll do this forever. But <laughs> what if uh, it sucks, and like we don't uh, sell the T-shirts, and we don't get over it, and we don't uh, make any movement 
it's ADS forever, all right, because it's the last thing we'll ever do. <laughs> We're over as fuck, though. I like at least at one show. <laughs> you know? We got Look, the love and stuff. Three matches in and you're the champs. I couldn't ask for a better ride. You know what I mean? But I was saying, like, cross. That's that's a great start. But we yep. gotta keep it going. Modest. Dude, Two go crazy. Modest at the top, straight to the top, and then he can't feel a star shine for why we shouldn't give a f- And uh that's the podcast, guys. Have a great night. That's my favorite Jeff Hardy, by the way. The uh, wait, really? Yeah, modest. Dude. I crashed Jeff Hardy top tier. I almost bought the that belt the other day because I, I have like this big kick of belts. I also have this bad boy. Let me show this one. <laughs> if you would have bought that Jeff Hardy Enigma title, I would have not talked to you for a year. Dude, I swear to God, I was going to. But you know what I did buy? What'd you buy? This Dang, bad that's so cool. Boy, right here. This bitch is so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> On the fucking apron, dude. Stephen Hawkins, eat your fucking heart out, dude. This is the coolest belt ever. So you need to get one. On J dude. That that J Lethal run. Top tier. Everything about that belt specifically to me is like why I got into wrestling, like at least independent wrestling so heavy. Because there's like other great independent wrestling in times or whatever, but like that twenty fourteen run to twenty eighteen run, can't beat it. It's it's lethal. It's I think Kevin Steen maybe was the first one to have that belt, but I could be wrong. Don't fucking quote. Probably not. I don't know. That's in my head. I think he had it. So we got fucking Kevin Steen, Jay Luthor, Jay Briscoe, Adam Cole, uh, another guy that I don't really like. Uh, like, and, they, <laughs> and these are just top tier things, like great fucking things. Uh, so like Adam Cole had the big move. I, I always rant about this stuff, so I'm not going to rant about this Ring of Honor run, as I always do. Next year we're going to stand up and see what I'm like. See, you know what? I feel like this is less of a podcast. I wish, really, we would do the live like we talk about. This seems like more of like a live, like, just people reacting like we react off people better. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like we should Man, have we, a live. We can switch to that. It's just going to be a tab order, but it's not impossible. I, I don't know how to do it. I just feel like we'd be able to react. Because, like, talking about nothing, like, me and Chris Crunk, like, we're great friends. But me and Chris Crunk also... We either don't talk about anything at all, or we talk about everything in one sitting, if that makes sense. But it's also do this shit uh, all the time. Yeah, like it don't happen because uh, we don't talk every day. But I call you like at least like once every other Sunday, and we'll just like we'll do like these rants where we're just like, dude, fucking Ring of Honor champion, dude. Remember yep. what fucking Punk beat Austin Aries, and we're just like going at it and like stuff like that. And then you'll be like, all right, man, I gotta go, and I'll be like, see you, dude. And then like. <laughs> And I'll see you the next show. Then we'll talk. Then we'll talk for three days, and it's it. Doesn't it make sense? Uh, uh, so I'm looking at it. Uh, so in 2010, because I don't remember when that belt shows up, but I think it is um, when Kevin Steen wins it. Because then Jay Briscoe wins it, mm-hmm. and then Adam Cole wins it, and then Michael Elgin wins it, then Jay Lethal wins it, then Kyle O'Reilly wins it, then Christopher Daniels wins it, then Cody wins it, then Don Castle wins it, then Matt Taven wins it, then Rush wins it, then Roosh, then PCO. Taven was on a champion. Okay, let me say this, and I hope this don't like, so if we ever do become great wrestlers, like, and we ever do, like, somehow get signed, which would be real sick, this is where it's going to fucking end us all. But I think that it, we're, hear me out, dude, hear me out. I think that, don't, what the fuck, I'm going to leave. What, what is the deal here, dude? What, what, what is it? What just, is it, dude? You're pre up there just like, hey, if, if you want to know what's going to get us canceled, let me go ahead and say it. <laughs> no, I'm saying, okay, the Christopher Daniels title running up, I think, and I think Christopher Daniels is like one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. I think that Cody Rhodes is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. I, blah, 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 blah. All those wrestlers after that are amazing. But I do think that bef- after when Kyle O'Reilly won it and up is when Ring of Honor like weirdly started going down. Now, Kyle O'Reilly was like that roster at the time was still like great top tier roster, but it was just you could already tell they were past their prime in that at that moment at least. I think they have a chance to like ball out now and re like re go crazy with a brand if they wanted to, but I don't think it'll ever hit Jay Lethal, Kevin Steen, Adam Cole. Like I think that's like the greatest time in wrestling. Like that was like you have AEW now, which is really sick, but I really believe that was like prom teen. Don't do that. It's not AEW. 
Well, that, that was like prom, like wrestling as like a teenager or a kid or like you who's like 85 at the time, like watching wrestling to where it's like, to where it's like, uh, impact. You, you, everybody wanted to still watch TNA. Everybody wanted to watch Ring of Honor. Everybody was watching WB and like, we would bitch about it, but like everybody was in tune. That's when like you was getting 3 million on Raw and a million on fucking impact. Now, now there's barely a million on Raw. It's so weird to me. But I, like, that's like, to me, the best time in wrestling. You can get your PWG videos every fucking three months you could get i don't know it's that, a great time. that era of ring of honor is definitely like the peak of like hey independent wrestling's the way to go plus after i think it's after the the big build for the bullet club is fine kenny omega cody feud mm-hmm. i think after that like it was just tanked for ring of honor because one aw uh because already nxt had like sucked everyone dry yeah. You know what I mean? They had taken anything that was good. And so NXT was what was cool. And then AW came in and just finished the ch- and yep. like took anybody that would be a value for Ring of Honor. Um, not that there wasn't good wrestlers, it's just like draw talent. And so Second, the was always good. I think the last good Ring of Honor champion though, to me, that like really made a difference was Jonathan Gresham. I think Gresham really, like, at least, like, with this new era, you know, like, there's yeah. Dalton Castle, was, and everybody loved Dalton Castle, and he was great, but, like, I think Jonathan was starting to make Ring of Honor, like, good again. He started to make it where, it, like, was must-see, because he was traveling everywhere, he was defending it everywhere, and he wasn't just putting on, like, these phoned-in matches ever. Like, every one of his matches were always main events, not and not necessarily, like, in the place on the card, but no matter where he was. The, that match was going to steal the show no matter what. I watched him and Blake Christian, me, my friend Dakota, my friend Jordan, went to GCW in Atlanta because we just wanted to go watch it. You know, I was out for my leg or whatever. And yeah. we sit there, and it was him versus Blake Christian. And when I tell you, that was like one of the best matches I've ever seen in my entire life. And it was just because, and I'm not, it was Blake Christian, obviously, but like Jonathan Gresham just has like this next level, like I'm a main event guy and I'm trying to show everybody that. Like the fact that he's not like main eventing every night on like an AEW or whatever is so weird to me. So fucking weird. I'm trying to think of what the best match I've ever seen live was that was like name talent. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like way back in the day and it was at this show called UCW. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it was called. But the main event was Rikishi versus Eric Young Mm -hmm. and it was balling, dude. It's ridiculous. And for some reason, uh, Lita came out and was the referee. Like, it was so what, dope. Did you did you wrestle at all, or this was like when you were still in your fan stage, like oh, going I was to sh- a fan? Like, I actually went there and I was sitting in the crowd, and I met this guy named Scott Hensley who was there. <laughs> and Scott Hensley was in the crowd, and he had like this book of like wrestling cards that he was trying to get signed from back in the day. And I talked to this Scott Hensley guy for a while, and like we really like kind of like got along and like, oh, we both know a decent amount about wrestling. And then like I sat in the crowd and I'm with my friend Keith, and like we're watching the show, and like there's this guy beside me, and he just looks so familiar. And I was like, fuck, dude, that guy looks so familiar. And I just kind of like kept like kind of eyeballing him a little bit because I'm like young. I'm like, I had to have been like 12 or I was young. Okay. Like I remember I was just like too young to like where I'm still like shy. I don't want to talk to anybody. And I just kept like looking over at him like, and then finally, he just looked at me. He goes, "He goes, I'm who you think I am." And I was like, <laughs> "And it was fucking Canyon." Oh, really? That's awesome. What the yeah, fuck? That's- he was just chilling in the crowd, and I was like, "I was like, you're fucking Canyon." He goes, he goes so awesome. and he was like, "He was like, I wrestle here. I just like, I'm not on tonight's show, so I'm just hanging out." And I was like, "Holy fucking shit!" And like, wow. of course, th- then I just like shut down because i was like oh my god oh shit this is the wwe fucking superstar canyon yeah yeah he's sitting next to the fucking canyon and that was just like crazy i don't remember a time that i've had like that type of interaction but i do know i wrestled in rome georgia and i wrestled alistair crow and it was at this bar Damn. and I, like all, that's why i graduated that but like my group of friends was there like everybody from like when i went to school that i hung out with was all there they was all chanting me i have like a an instagram picture of it on my instagram and so my friend Brian was like really the only wrestling fan, like out of any of them. Like they all came and they chanted Kevin or blah blah blah. But like he was like the one who noticed. So like I'm in the back and I'm getting ready. And you know, like when you bring your friends, like they think they can just do anything in the world, you know. 
So he's like, he's like skipping and hopping back there. And I'm like, Brian, dude, you got to get out of here. Like it's, it's wrestling. You get me in the locker room. That's dumb, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, bro, guess who I'm out here drinking with? And I was like, who? And he's like, Marty Janetti. I was like, what the fuck? So we, I, so I go out there, right. And I'm, and I'm talking to him and, and Marty's like, honestly, uh, the coolest guy ever. Like he's like telling us all these stories. Fuck Shawn Michaels is like his main thing. But like, other than that, like, he's just having the time of his life. And my friend Brian, like, had the greatest night of all time because of that. And I remember he took a picture, and he was like, dude, I don't think I will ever be able to talk going to another wrestling show. Because you can go and you can enjoy it. But being there, sitting with these type of people is, like, the coolest thing like, as a kid. You know? I'm just waiting on that. I'll get, I, the day I'm sitting at a wrestling show. And I look to the Stop. right and I go. I'm, I'm just, like, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for the day I'm at a wrestling show and I'm just chilling. And I look to my fucking right and I'm like, Mark? Mark Calloway? Oh, I'm like, oh. Dude, I so like the so the coolest like uh moment in my career of uh, not career in my life. Sorry, that's stupid. That sounds stupid. My coolest moment in my life was uh my friend Gary, uh really close friend Gary had moved to New Jersey when we were like younger and like was living up there and it was like kind of sad because I like never really saw him, but we would like uh video chat all the time, right? One time he like texts me. He's like, "Hey, you gotta get on your computer. I'm gonna video chat you." And I was like, "Oh yeah." And it was like my birthday. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Okay, like I guess." So like I get on the computer, like I pull it up, and like I pull up the screen. His like little face pops up. He's like, "Dude, you won't believe who I'm with." And I was like, "Who?" And he turned the camera around, and it was Vader. And no. Yeah, okay. Vader. Was like, he was like, he was like, "Hey, Chris, heard you're having a good birthday. This is Big Van Vader. Just want to tell you happy birthday." And dude, I'm like. <laughs> and so like my, my boy gary had went to like some fan fest whatever like who's he wants at sound fest on my yeah. birthday just to get vader to like that is so fucking cool that is awesome so dope dude what a good friend also to like really think about you in that scenario you know that's awesome yeah dude i have so many sign pictures of christian and i've never met him because really? everybody knows that I'm like obsessed with Christian. Like Christian's my guy, and so like if people go to like fan fest that like know me, they'll always get like a signed picture of Christian, and like out to me. Like it'll say like to Chris, like, and like they'll give it to me, and I'm just like, damn, dude, like because he's never like in the area that I'm at. Well, none of my friends have bought me anything Undertaker signed, so I'll just remember who's my real friends and who isn't. Dude, there you go, there you go. Call him out now. My- does Undertaker does Undertaker do like signings and shit? Uh, it's like Comic Cons, but it's like very rare, and they're so expensive. Like for Christmas, my girl was like, "Do you want to like, ball the fuck out and do whatever you want to, or do you want me to get the Undertaker thing?" And I was like, "The Undertaker thing seems really cool, but it was also like I think it was like fifteen hundred dollars, like, and that's it was in uh, like California, so I'd had to buy my flight, buy my hotel, and then go out there and do that. But and you know, it's probably just one of those like, "Hey, how you doing? Have a great night." Oh yeah, dude. All for fifteen hundred dollars because in my head, like it's worth it for obvious reasons. But then in my head, I'm like, logically, like God, is it really worth it? You know, like I love the Undertaker with all my heart. And if y'all want to just, if you want to fake sign something and give it to me, and act like it's, I will be happy forever. Okay, whoever's out there, just do something for me. But do you, God damn it. Do you remember that? Uh, it was like a pro wrestling mixtape I did where like it had all of our like profile. And it, our, they, and it, yeah. Undertaker. <laughs> I remember. Uh, Donnie was like, oh, we know Kevin's going to be there now. Dude, fuck you, dude. Fuck you, Donnie. You bitch-ass motherfucker. That was so funny, though. That's definitely, dude, I have all my posters somewhere, and that's definitely in that stack, because it's, like, one of my favorite posters ever. I have such a good, like, uh, if Pro Wrestling Mixtape ever gets off the ground for real, and I get to, like, kind of do it for a little while, um, it, one, will be just definitely, like, a parody wrestling show. Like, it won't be a real wrestling show. But me and Joey have, like, one of the most money ideas that would be, like, so bad and so funny at the same time and it's like where we would book um matches where like it'd be like me versus like a uh, big tom name talent <laughs> <laughs> we would, like advertise it. Um, <laughs> but then it would just be joey dressed up like <laughs> show. let me tell you there's something you should check out that's really good it's uh it's these guys they wrestle in like a subway and they dress up as like old wwf guys have yeah, you yeah. seen this that sounds wild I yeah the coolest shit ever There's, i saw one the other day it was the undertaker and i want to say it was maybe mick foley and they did the the paul bearer run in and then kane come out and he like 
tombstone him or choke him or whatever. And it was like so cool. That's what I think is money. Because don't get me wrong, independent wrestling is that real sick, and I will forever be an independent wrestler because I think it's awesome. But I do think that is a way to go because people yeah. love that kind of. Stuff. They have so many fucking views. People don't understand. There's like such a uh, market for parody wrestling that yep. like is untapped. Mm -hmm. um, that like you could for real one, it would be the easiest night of your life because you wouldn't have to like actually do anything. But bro, you could sell outbuildings of just people like get to see this fuck shit um and just like laughing and having a fucking ball like i know dude if i was like there and like so dude i don't want to spoil it because it's like too good um i feel like i should just do it anyways because it might not ever happen but so we were gonna make this flyer okay. and it was gonna be like pro wrestling mixtape chris cronk versus chainsaw charlie yeah. and, dude, that's and, awesome. And we were gonna build the the giant wood box, and then you're gonna hear like the chainsaw like rip up, and he was gonna like cut the door out, and it would fall, but it would just be Joey at the chainsaw. <laughs> and then it was just like and we would have like the world's like shittiest, funniest like wrestling match. Uh, just because like I think like posting the flyer, like unannounced, unprovoked. Just and, Chris Cook. and it's like for real a picture of Chase on Charlie, like 100%. Like, I'd probably get some cease and desist in the mail or some shit, but I would do it anyways because I would give a shit. That's awesome. Uh, would you get, like, like it's it would be it would be false advertisement, right? In that scenario, I feel like if you got enough traction with it, you would, but like on the level that we're at, no, like no one would give a shit. But if if ever, got, if ever got to the point where like you're selling like 500 to a thousand tickets, like somebody would be like, Hey, <laughs> cut this shit out. But that's what sucks about it. It's like, you can't get that big. Like, unless you made like, okay, you can do it in the sense of like the parody wrestling, wrestling revolution of like a Bork laser. Who's obviously Brock Lesnar. You could probably sell it that way without getting sued. Cause I don't, I guess they never got sued for doing it. But I think that's a money idea. And I think, dude, let me tell you, if you ever want to do it, I am in. I will throw money in on this shit because I think that is, like, one of the coolest ideas of all time. Really, I really do believe that, and I really think it would pop the fuck. So, so like, I'll tell you something that uh, – a little inside scoop that nobody knew. So, I wrestled Adam Priest on the first show. But I don't remember if it was the Adam – it was the Adam Priest match. So, it was me and Adam Priest. Well, it was at the RCW building in Chatsworth, Georgia. And I had an entrance I wanted to do. I didn't want to just do, like, the walkout entrance, like, whatever. They have a whole fucking casket in the back that they roll shit on. Like, you, it's the casket. They have the thing. You, you roll the casket on. And so I'm, like, begging everybody. I'm, like, please, like, push me out on this casket. Please, please, please. And so Crunk finally is, like, you know what? Fuck it. If you want to go out on the casket, go out on the casket. And I'm, like, my oh, man. But then the owner of the building, <laughs> the actual, like, wrestling show comes, and he's, like, Hey, you can't fucking do that. And let me tell you guys, me coming out in the casket would have been like, I probably would have retired after. Because that's like as high as it goes for me. And that is like so cool. But I didn't get to do it. So just know that uh, that was a possibility. I come out in the casket. The Undertaker. I have been working pretty hard. Like, I'm not going to say so hard, like to the bone or anything like that. But I've been working pretty hard for like years mm -hmm. on getting a for real, like, show going. Um, it's just like it's one of those things where like I don't want to pour too much of my own money into it because I have like enough problems. And so uh but once it gets going, dude, and one day it'll happen, it'll click. And it's just gonna be like to the races of like if that's all I ever do, I will be so happy. I won't care anymore. Cause I really just want to do a show with like at least my friends. Mm. Um, because I have so many like good friends in wrestling, like not even just like the people I've met from like a news house stuff like that. Like, dude, I like I miss watching Adrian Ackle wrestle so bad. Oh, me too. I saw him one time become the biggest fan ever. I feel you. He is so slept on and good. Yep. Uh, and he's so funny. Like, yep. remember when he took that Sid Ton from Big Homie at the show? And he Wait, goes, what? ref, cover me, count this shit. <laughs> I have thought about that like almost every day since I've thought about like that moment and how much I laughed watching that. But the thing about Adrian too is it, it wasn't just that the whole and I'm not saying like oh he's your friend so he's funny like this dude legit is the funniest wrestler I've ever like he could be like Santino Marella over if he wanted to be like is like the most greatest comedy wrestler of all time because he just says shit that's just the randomest funny 
holy fucking what the fuck moments of all time. Like literally, he become one of my favorite wrestlers of all time that night. I swear to God, so funny, so fucking funny. Dude, he's awesome, and he used to like uh, piss people off so bad back in the day because he would just say the worst thing he could say to anyone ever, and it would be so funny. Uh, I remember like he was like trying to call this match with this guy who was like. It was at TWE when I booked TWE. He's trying to. I had booked this guy that was like a champion at another show, and Adrian Ackle like walks up to him. The guy doesn't even know who Adrian Ackle is, right? And Adrian Ackle like looks pretty goofy already. He like walks right up to this guy. He's like, "Hey," he's like, "I know you're the champion, someone else, but I'm kind of a big deal at this show, so we have to do the things that I like to do." <laughs> he didn't mean it like to be mean. He just taught like he's just he talks that- like that. <laughs> It did. I was crying. That guy like fucking hated him ever since. Like they were like, we I'm fucking. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm like, your name? Yes. Will you tell us? I right know on the podcast. Huh? Will you tell us who it is? Oh, it was Adrian Armour. Oh no! Fuck, really? I mean, yeah. Adrian Armour. I feel like at the time had very like, like super serious wrestler, but he was a great wrestler, so it's like understandable. Like maybe he saw it as like a disrespectful thing. Dude, he came out. He came out of that song that was like uh, that ASAP Ferg song. That's uh, new level, where he's like, "I'm on a new level." Hey, and so we, we did like a remix of the thing. It was like, "I hate Adrian Ackle." <laughs> it was like bed bugs in the hotel. Now I hate Adrian Ackle. Got twenty. Hey. <laughs> All right. It was so good, dude. And uh, like he sings that to this day. Like when I see him, he'll be singing that song all the time. Dude, everybody stresses me out. Literally, all these like big deal guys that like I learned that like, I got to look at them as coworkers, like not me a fan of them, just like be cool with everybody, you know. But they're just all like, "Hey, Chris Crunk, how are you?" And I'm like, "Be friends, like, can we all be fucking friends? And what the fuck? Be friends with me too, bro. Like, give me a fucking handshake or something, like, you know, like show me some uh, famous wrestlers, guys, please." Dude, please nothing, me- nothing's like more. uh Telling of how long I've been wrestling for real, then every time that like a name value wrestler is on the show that run, they see me, they're like, Hey, Chris, come on. And like, hug me. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, damn, dude, I'm old. Like, I'll uh, see one. The one dude that knows me is like, dude, you took a German suplex so clean. You know, I'm like, you yeah, know, you know, we good. Tars. You know, like, we good. Like, he knows me. Like, but it's so stupid to like think like that in my head. Like, I should just love it. But everybody's just best friends with you, dude. It stresses me out. Like, why can't we all just be best friends? <laughs> it was oh. it's it's the only accomplishment of my existence in wrestling. Is that at least like if somebody is famous now, they could be like, Yeah, I know Chris Crook. <laughs> I'll get like friend requests on Facebook and I'm like, I'm in. That's how I am. You know, I'll get something like real quick and I'm like, oh yeah, let's go. I got one from Martin Stone today, and I was like, dude, I'm in. I was like, he knows me now, Chris Crunk, so you can go fuck yourself, okay? He knows me, goddammit. No, I'm just funny. But uh, it was just real funny. Because I was like, what a random thing to give. It was real funny. <laughs> it was real funny. I did also get the, the Sergeant Slaughter follow that everybody's gotten. And I thought I was, like, super cool for it. Man, dude, I didn't even get that, so that's cool. Really? I'm not just, like, calling everybody. I should probably have to look, because I really don't ever pay attention. I'm, like, so bad at Twitter. It's not even funny. Dude, I'm like the opposite. See, I'm very like, let me just check on everything constantly. Because I, I feel like I overthink social media. Like, I worry about it way too much. I'm too old for Twitter. No, that's like, I don't think so. Because you still have like a swag. If you didn't have swag, maybe not. But you have like a swag too. That's like cool. You were like lame as fuck. Like, if you were, I ain't going to drop nobody. Never mind. That's all like anybody. You don't. They, can't tell me you've never was there ever a time when you did everything social media like i get to the point where i'll post something and i'm like looking every five minutes and i'll go off of it like i'll say i'll do dishes or something like it's so stupid like why well, i think like this but like i'll do dishes and it'll take me 10 minutes and in my head i'm like oh i hope i got 15 20 likes like i don't know why i'm like that that's so annoying to me that i, that I get like that you know i there was definitely like a point i was like that and then like i know for sure like 2016 like that was my life like mm-hmm. It was I had it planned out like to the to the time. Like I'm like, okay, at eleven I'll post my Instagram story. And then at twelve I'll make sure that my Twitter post goes up. And then at one I'll do my Facebook post. And then like and I would just like stagger it out and like uh try so hard to like 
fight the algorithm of the timeline and like figure out when I'm supposed to post this and post that. And uh, I was, I probably sounded like a fucking crazy person to my friends. Uh, Cause none of my friends, like they don't fucking know about wrestling, nor do they give a shit. None of my friends care about social media, like my home friends. And so like when I would be talking to them, I'm like, Oh fuck, it's fucking 12. I got to post my fucking thing. Fucking, Facebook and they'd be like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" And I'm like, "Oh, dude, I gotta post my little snippet of me doing this fucking flippy move." <laughs> and they're like, they're like, dude, not- they're like, "Who gives a shit?" I'm like, "No, you don't understand. It's so important." <laughs> that's that's literally where I'm at though. Like, I'm literally just like, I'll post and I'll be like, I'm, same thing. Like, I'm not as much on the time thing as I used to be. Like back in the day, was very like, okay, on the weekends I have their phone more. And, and, like, during the weekdays, they get out of school at 3 o'clock. And people get off work at, like, 3 to 5. So if I post at, like, 4, it'd be perfect. Everybody's on their phone, chilling at home. Like, that was, like, the thought process. Where I still have those thoughts to where, like, I, I always want likes. And I always want, it's like I always, like, want acceptance. And I feel like you should never want that. I feel like that's something that, like, who gives a fuck? Why do you care about what people think? But it's just a human uh, instinct, I guess, to just have this want to be loved feeling. And it sucks. And I hate it. I hate giving a fuck about like likes or, or love or like people messaging me and stuff like that. Cause it makes me feel like I'm just like, like I have nobody on the outside. If that makes sense. You know, yeah, dude, I fucking was so obsessed. Cause I like, just like you, I've always been like a pretty decent wrestler. Like even in my shitty stages, I was still like, you know, like, okay. And now I'm like, I'm pretty good. But like, I was just on this quest to prove to everyone, like, no, I am a good wrestler, I swear. <laughs> and I'm just like, now I look back, luckily, and I'm just like, I was so stupid, because who gives a shit? I assume you'll probably get that way, where you're just like, fuck it. Now I'm just kind of like, fuck it. Like, if someone really thinks I'm a bad wrestler nowadays, fuck them. They obviously yeah. never watched any of my shit to begin with. Because, like, if anything, I've ever met anyone that, like, thinks that I'm a bad wrestler, I'd there's no way they ever watched my fucking shit or they watched me like 10 years ago and just assumed that I never learned a fucking thing since. And so I'm like, ah, fuck those guys. <laughs> you know, I am like, it's so easy to like, I don't know. It's so easy to just post and expect though. I don't know. That's, that's where I'm at. I do agree with what you're saying though on the, uh, like who gives a fuck? Like, why does it matter? It's just like actually doing it is another thing. But I also feel like there's like this expect, uh, ex, what is the word I'm looking for? Expectancy. There's an expectancy of like you have to be on social media. That's the word, right? No expectation. Expectation. Yes, yeah, sorry. There's an expectation of where you have to like post, and you always have to be like relevant and always seen. And I think that's another thing about me is like if you're not constantly relevant or constantly posting, like not even like surpass the likes. If you don't post, you don't show people like, hey, I'm wrestling. Like, look at me, I'm wrestling. Then people are like, oh, he doesn't wrestle anymore, or it's like a. Uh, oh, he's not important anymore. There goes his relevancy because he have not posted in two weeks. You know what I mean? And that's, I think, what gets in my head. Which, that part is true. And that's the that's the broken part about pro wrestling is that, especially Twitter, social media controls pro wrestling. Oh, yeah, Even it does. Like, the people that post about Twitter, pro wrestling, like, they don't give a fuck about pro wrestling. It's the fucking, like mom and pop bullshit like think about the shows we do like all those people in the crowd like they'll be like hundreds right it'll be a decent number in the crowd right but then the front row is like 30 people and that's the ones that post on twitter those other yep. people they either just yep. walked up or they, yep. they they may come to a bunch of the shows but they don't give a yep. fuck they're not going to go home and post about this shit but then pro wrestling fucking like if I run a show, I'm I'm running Chris Crunk Wrestling. I get on CCW page, I scroll through, and I'm like, oh fuck! And I'm like, oh, those thirty people posted that they really like this, 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 and this. And even though like I was at the show and I saw that like these other things also were like super over, I'm like, oh well, fuck those other things. Only the three things that these three people posted about are what what I'm gonna like work on. And that's like the and there, there's some success to that, but there's so much like broken. Uh, wrestling logic about that because you got to think like back in the day of like in the 90s is a great era of that where there's like so much main event over talent uh because they played to the crowd that was there mm. like if 
Stone Cold went out and he got over that night. Like, guess what? He got to do something else the next week. Not because like he went over and got he went out and got over, and then people posted about it online. You know what I mean? He like, did it because there. I agree. They didn't post about it online. They didn't fucking give a sh- like. They didn't have the option. You know what I mean? And like, so just that reliance on like, hey, if you don't get the and it sucks for people like me and you. Because me and you, like, as soon as our match is done, we're on the Twitter feed. We're like, God, I hope somebody posted about our fucking match yep. we just had. Uh, so that way, like, we can get acknowledgement that we are good. Yep. Um, yep. That sucks. It's a broken way to do it. Because, like, to try to, like, request that instant gratification from someone is crazy. Because then that fan, the hundreds of fans that would go to a show around here, they would watch our match. And they probably like... God, dude, that fucking ADS match was so good. That was awesome. But then there's maybe more matches after that. They watch those matches. Then they have a drive home. Then they go home. They go to sleep. They wake up. And maybe, just maybe, even though in our hearts we don't want them to ever forget us, they may have forgotten about last night a little bit. Not like they probably had a good time. They're probably like, oh, yeah, last night was so fun. But they're not like, oh, fuck. When Kevin Ryan jumped off that fucking ladder, God, yeah. it, like that's what sucks about pro wrestling is because if they don't post about it immediately, they will most likely forget about it, which doesn't mean they didn't enjoy it. It's just like they you have don't know. And yeah. then like the promoters and like the people in control, uh, like are scrolling and they're like, Well, I mean, that thing that uh they did was cool, but nobody posted nobody about it. it so. Yep. <laughs> Uh, maybe they're not as over as I thought. And you're just like, come on, bro. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Um, and like, that's not me calling out the promotions here. Cause like, honestly, new South, I do respect new South because they're very into the homegrown talent. Yep. Of like, right. They, they back their fucking people. And like, it's not just cause we work there. It's not just cause we're the tag champs. I don't give a fuck about that. What I'll tell you right now is like Hunter Drake just won the Hoss. Yep. You know what I mean? Two years ago, he was getting choke slammed in a fucking tuxedo. Okay. Hey, bro. So, yep. Fucking they back their people. Like there is people there that like at another show would never get a fucking chance. Okay. And then because New South backed them so hard, and I'm not saying that's the only reason they made it. I'm saying it helped them. Like look at a Rolando Perez. Rolando Perez at other shows was shit on and was treated like a little like tiny minuscule like B plus player, like useless. And New South always backed him. He always had something to do at New South. He always had like a spot at New South. And I'm not saying that's the reason why he's getting these things done because he's also awesome and super talented and he works his ass off. But what I'm saying is New South backed him enough where like he did kind of get like a little exposure of like, oh, like this guy must be good. Um, And like that's uh, there's other shows that like sleep on that shit. You know, like, uh, God, I didn't mean to go on the super long rant, but I'm just like. <laughs> it's not even about us. It's not even more about us because, like, to be honest, we're pretty lucky guys, like me and you. I've got to do more in wrestling than I would ever dream of doing. I'm here 100%. At the age I am, dude, I'm beyond blessed. 100%. I could have wrestled because I started off in like hole in the wall, like 10 people in the crowd shows. I could have did that forever or until like I quit. And that would have been enough because that's all I wanted. I just wanted to say I did it. You know what I mean? I just wanted to be a wrestler. Um, and so, like, the more the more I get to do, the better. Yay. Great for me. Great for you. Um, but uh, Because there's other people out there that are so slept on that, like, deserve opportunity and then get passed up because of the bullshit system of pro wrestling. Like, the yeah. fact that they, oh, well, that guy's pretty good, but he doesn't get any uh, likes on Twitter and uh, nobody retweets his stuff. And um, when he posts a video, like, nobody really watches like and it'll be like the greatest fucking wrestler of all time, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, fuck this, dude. Broken ass system. It is so cool though seeing those guys that like do break that and they get past it, and you see like how happy they are. And you know, the, let's like I'll sidetrack this real quick and just be like, the cool thing that I feel like we should appreciate more that I feel like we don't, or just a lot of people don't, especially like I know I don't, and I'm like really bad at it. But like if if Tyler Pierce would have seen Kevin Ryan now, but I was fucking say I'm. 10 years old right bong say i'm 10 years old and i see how uh, i would think it's like literally the coolest thing of all time like everything that i've got to do like all the cool stuff that i feel like i've done like and that and not in like a a bragging way by any sense just like i've been very lucky like 
uh, like there's a lot of stuff I want to do. Like, don't get me wrong. Like ambitions always like through the roof. But like, if I just take those small moments that I've always had and like, I, and I've done throughout my entire seven years of wrestling, I would be like, man, holy shit! Like, how cool! And like you said, we could be stuck at these hole in the wall places. We could be stuck at these places that have like no give a fuck. So like people that book, I'm not gonna say these, just a shit bird promotions basically. That we could always wrestle at and not give a fuck about and like, but no, we get like on good shows. Like I'm not saying like we've done like Ring of Honor or like AEW. Like we haven't been on TV, but like the fact that we're like even in my head considered to be like that being a possibility is so cool because we would have never like as kids, we'd have never thought we'd have got that far. Like we could be literally considered as like the best wrestlers in Alabama or like the best wrestlers in Georgia or the best, you know what I mean? The best wrestlers in Tennessee at one point, at least in our careers. And it's like, when would we have ever thought that we had got that? And we got love for it. And we got people who are backing us. Like, th- like this dude, literally Stephen Hawkins has our own custom ADS titles and he's done that twice. Like, that is so cool in my head that, like, you had, like, that is, like, how good we've gotten, or at least how how much love that we get and how we should appreciate it. I feel like instead of us always just being, like, so negative, Nancy, about shit, so just, like, fuck this, I don't like what I'm doing, like, why does this suck? I feel like we should always look into the positive side, because some stuff does suck, but we could also be wrestling in front of uh, Two Teeth Timmy, and with that one guy chanting the whole entire time, and then we wrestle fucking... Dude who can't move worth the fuck and we can't do nothing with. But instead, we get guys like Tyler Matrix and Logan James, and we get guys like Donnie and Stunt. You know, like, I'm not that I hate those guys, but at least we got to wrestle them. Like, yeah, fuck those guys. But at the same time, like, we could be wrestling anybody else, you know? Like, so, like, I think that is really cool that, like, I can sit down at least right now and really appreciate what I have. Cause I won't always do that, but I do feel like you should always take out that time to appreciate what you have because there are a lot of guys, a, a shit ton of guys who would, who would do anything to be where we're at. You know, so many guys. I think about that shit all the time. Like my brother specifically, Shane Oakley, give him some love. I'll call him out right now. Who like the boy, uh, heartless. There it is. Who like, uh, wants to be big and he wants to like break out and do cool stuff, but he doesn't get that chance because he just, no, it's, it's what you're saying. I'm trying to give him like the social media talk. Like that's like a big thing in wrestling, but it's so hard because he doesn't, because he hasn't did anything. That's like, that's like a new South or a pro South that like, is has internet connections in my head. Like, I guess that's the best way to put it. That has people outside of the box that see him. So once it gets that far, it'll be fine. But like, I know if, if Shane Oakley was in the spot that me or you were in, he would be crying right now. Like he would go home and he would be the happiest human being alive. And I feel like that's why we should appreciate it. And we do love y'all. And we do, uh, uh, we, we look forward to y'all. Like me, the cool thing about me and Chris Cronk is like, we seem like dickheads and I'm a quiet guy in the back, but we would do anything really for anybody in that scenario like i've noticed like that's one thing that we've always done is like there'll be these guys who like don't have anything or like we'll put under our wing in general because we just want them to do really good we want to have a banger match with them so they're like yo those guys always took care of us but also like it'll you know how good that makes them feel to like have those like the first match i think of not even with me it's it's you and it's uh marcus Dillon, Dooley as we call it you wrestled him at that high school show and i know i think it was his first match and i think about this all the time like that made his entire life, you know, all you did was give him like a couple of things. But to him, that was like WrestleMania. Like that's the stuff that is so cool. And like, I feel like we should always take a step back and just appreciate where we're at. And we do love everybody. So there it is. There's my, there's my also rant. Dude, my, you took my negative rant and spun it so well. And I love it. And that's what we are. We're yin and yang yep. uh, because we're both two very real people. We both have two very real outlooks on life. Um, and uh, there's so much like positive and negative in like everything that you do. And uh, we will expose both of it. I will expose the negative for sure. Kevin Ryan will expose the positive. And that's what makes us so fucking good. Not only as friends, not only as partners, but just like in general, like as um, like this. Like if you watch this video and you get this far, like, damn, that probably like because like I took them on the ride of like what sucks yeah <laughs> like, like oh yeah that sucks but also here's what's good about it and i was like Dang, yeah. dude, it's, it's a good picture and i we did uh and i do and you do um we pick people out and we fucking we grab those people and like shake them and be like hey you can fucking do anything you want fuck these fucking people and like uh very little did that happen to me when i was coming up so like i always made sure to like kind of go out of my way when I thought that I had like any ounce of like juice to give it to anyone, I would try so hard 
uh, to just like hype those people up and like um, make them feel like they could do something. And I used to have like a way worse approach about it because I was like, um, because I've always like took people under my wings, but I used to always like take them under my wing and be like, hey, here's what sucks about wrestling. Let me tell you everything that sucks about wrestling. Uh, completely different now. And now I like do it in a positive way, but like there are so many people like that, and I won't name drop, and I'm not saying any of those people owe us anything because they don't. Nobody owes me shit. But what I'm saying is like I will do that until the day I fucking die in wrestling. Uh, I will fucking like find some little Joe Schmo who like just started, and I will like give them the hype speech or like the advice that I have. I don't have like a lot to give, but I will give it to them for mm-hmm. free. And not give a fuck and not expect anything back. Uh, because I remember when I was like that. And also, I really want wrestling to not suck. And so I just want it to be really good. And so I try to, like, anybody I see that's good, I'm like, you're great. You could be great because I want them to stick around and get good because then I get to wrestle them. Yep. And we both get to look great. Mm-hmm. And then you get to see, like, that's such a cool thing to me, also, is like, it's like you said, like, uh, you you obviously the Joe Smo or whatever like let me go ahead and say this real quick any outcast is not an outcast it's just you don't you haven't found your place yet but me and Chris Crunk you can always hang out with us because we are also outcasts so whatever but all you gotta is find that dark little corner next to the stage and even we do. Where we're at. yeah you can come over there anytime we're not actually evil people I just like my own personal space that's just me personally uh, but like. The cool thing in that scenario is like you see, it's like a Hunter Drake, for example. Like you're saying, like me and Hunter Drake used to be like the tightest of uh, groups of all time. Like I used to love Hunter Drake, best friend, like literally brother. Like everybody said we were just alike, uh, blah, blah, blah. And like me and Sean took him and Tyler Franks under our wings. And like look at where they're at now. Like Tyler Franks is like low key, like very, I don't understand how, but like one of the best wrestlers in the South. And it's not even like a, it's not a bullshit. It literally is just like, he, there's something that's just holding him back or maybe he just hasn't had his moment yet i don't get it but like if you watch tyler franks you'll literally think he's probably the the most slept on like the gatekeeper in my head like in a way then you got hunter drake hunter drake's a guy who you know it's the it's the generic like oh he's too small to make it you know mindset but really like he balled the fuck out like he has balled the fuck out he has traveled it's not even like he was given everything like this dude went to tom pritchard school he busted his ass with tom pritchard that's super dope already then he started making sounds. He started going everywhere and he started grinding. And now he's finally getting the roses he deserves. Now, I think he's had roses for a long time, you know, and not, not, not a bad way. It's just like people see his talent. And then you see now, like he has respect of everybody. And I think that is so cool, you know, because you can, you can be that, you know, anybody on here or, or in wrestling or and the Joe Schmoes who are like, oh, I can never be anything because, because wrestling sucks and it's hard for me to get anywhere. Like with that attitude, yes, it does. You're, you're, it's hard to get anywhere, but don't think like that. Just think, what can I do to be better? How can I be better? And if me and Chris Strong see it, we will come up to you and let you know, like, this is what the fuck you can do. And this is what's going to help you. And this is what will get you on the shows that we're on. And maybe that will help you get a step up. You know, I don't I don't care about somebody being better than me. I've never looked at anybody and been like, fuck that guy. I'm jealous of that guy, blah, blah, blah. Because that's stupid. Because who cares? It's wrestling in general. All I care about is the passion that I see. Braden Tune is a perfect example. A Braden Tune is somebody who loves wrestling loves her. Now, if you're a guy who don't give a fuck about wrestling, and I see you don't give a fuck about wrestling, and you're showing up, and your gear smells like shit, and you don't care to do anything in your matches, fuck you. I don't care. Like, I'm not gonna help. I'm not, honestly, like, that's different to me. But if I see you, like, you really give a fuck, I don't, like, I will do everything in my power to make sure you can do cool stuff, you can get somewhere cool, and what I can also give, I have no advice to give. I've wrestled seven years. I don't know shit. But what I've done, I can I can parlay to somebody, and hopefully that does it. But the, the jealousy thing, I've never been jealous of anybody. I don't care to be jealous of anybody. If, if you can come in and you can ball the fuck out and you get higher than me, that is so dope. Because now I see what you put in. You put in the effort. Maybe effort I didn't put in that made you better or made you fucking represent yourself 100 times better. Like, just just love wrestling and care about wrestling and really let us uh, let us be your guiding lot. That's not how I was going to finish it. But we can always be. But uh, just be awesome, guys, because you can be. Don't ever second guess yourself. Just go out there and do the best you can because that's all anybody could ask for. You can always be better, but if you second guess yourself and you shit on yourself, you can also always be worse. Don't second guess. Just go out there with confidence. Like my my main takeaway nowadays is because like I kind of feel bad because I have wrestled for a really long time, and I can't like teach somebody how to make it in wrestling. Uh. 
which sucks. I really wish I could. Um, but what I can do is teach you a lot of things about what not to do. Like things to not want to do and like mistakes to not make uh, because I probably already made them or like have done them. So uh, I think that's really cool. Uh, so I try to like pass that along. I don't know. I just like I'm very happy with uh, what we do. And man, when I say that you and I are at like a such a peak level of clarity where like we're so happy with I'm so happy with who I am and you're so happy with who you are and we're so happy with what we do that like it's like such a perfect mix of like one it's good because we're going to be like so connected with like not just each other but everybody in that room because yep. we're there to have a good time also we're at like such a good level of we don't give a fuck because we don't have shit to prove like we like we already know we're good like yep. i don't fucking give a shit so we're having like such a good fucking time <laughs> of just like goofing uh like making everybody in the room have a great fucking time i remember like i was fucking uh choking logan james with his chain and in the front row there's this homie with an nwo jacket i said yo that jacket is fucking sick while i'm like choking this dude <laughs> it's like no, dude, you're... the wrestling figure say the wrestling figure thing that's so funny okay. to me if you i don't know if it's like recorded or anything <laughs> but you yeah. put the wrestling figures on the ring and did the fucking Big ass fucking Spanish fly off the top, avalanche Spanish fly off the top through the fucking wrestling figures. Oh, and like Logan James broken. Holy shit. Yep. Then I'm like crawling in the ring and I'm selling. And I picked up this Becky Lynch and then this Sin card. I made the Sin card like fucking brain buster this Becky Lynch. And dude's like, I heard like just bro that could see me right there, dude. Just straight up just ah. And I was like, <laughs> last night I wrestled O'Shea, right? And I'm, I have to pull the ref. So, like, the ref is this girl from TWE. He's been there forever. Her name's Kim. A uh, yeah. super cool, like, girl. Whatever, I've known her for years. And so I'll pull to the side, and I'm just making her die laughing. Like, everything I'm saying, like, wow, look at that. He smacked him on the head. Look at his shoe. Oh, my God. And it's just, like, so funny to me that, like, that's at the point where we are in wrestling, but that's also to the point where it's, like, uh, like now we can have fun. That You know, like, you always talked about that. Like, one, you would say you're bored, which sucked. I always, like, never understood that. But now I feel like you are having fun. Now, you may still be bored, but I do feel like you're, like, enjoying it, you know, at least a little bit more. Uh, and I feel like we're now at the point where we literally can just enjoy everything we do. Like, I usually have nerves out the ass. And don't get me wrong, like, and not, not in a bad way. I don't really have those nerves anymore because I am so confident of, like, what I know in a sense, you know, uh, at least in, like, some form. And it is so cool to see, like, where we've gotten to to where we literally can just have that fun, at least for me, you know. Also, let me show you this real quick. My brother's, like, really... Uh, then what? Fuck, dude, how do I turn this shit off? Let's see. Um, yeah, how do I... Like, if you hit the screen, it just comes up from, like, there's, like, the three little... Oh, there you go. Yeah, so this is, uh, it's Mad Man. Shane Oakley. This right here is Shane Oakley, which is real sick. My brother, wearing the Cactus Jack shirt. I always love the Cactus Jack shirt. Uh, okay, let me ask you this. Is this the dude that you won tag titles with? I think that's Caden Christopher. Dude, that's my, that's my AWF tag team partner, Caden Christopher. That I told uh, my brother about this. Uh, we got Madman Pondo, which is real cool. And yep. we got uh, Black World Slasher. So, like, super cool. This is uh, the Shane Oakley we talk about. And these are guys who maybe will ball out one day and do something real cool. Yeah. I, to I know Cody will probably watch this and he'll love that. That's sick as fuck. Uh, me and Caden Christopher go so far back. One time uh, for Caden Christopher's, like, birthday, he had a backyard wrestling show and we went to it. <laughs> and we backyard wrestled at Caden Christopher's house, which was, like, so dope. Nope, I remember that. That shit was sick. Uh, that's dope. That's such a cool, like, uh, moment. That I get to one meet Madman Pondo, and it's, like, my old tag partner and your brother, like, chilling. Full circle right there. Well, that's, like, he texted me, uh, like, yesterday, and he was, like, you're wrestling O'Shea, and I'm I'm meeting Madman. I think he tagged with Madman Pondo, I'm pretty sure. And he was, like, I'm tagging with him, which is super dope. You know, that's awesome, you know? And he was, like, I'm tagging. Madman Pondo. And that makes me feel so good that, like, he's starting to get those moments. And and that's another thing, like, like we're talking about. Like, that stuff will come. If you just give it time. Just just trust the process. It sucks sometimes. Sometimes it takes longer than, like, my brother's things wrestled two years, you know? Uh, it Sometimes it takes a lot of time, but you'll get those moments, I promise you, where you'll be like, oh, my God, this is, like, everything I wanted. So, like, give yourself that time and appreciate what you're doing now. Because the more you appreciate what you're doing now, when you have those moments, those will be moments you enjoy the rest of your life. Like, we're talking about 
Probably talk about sitting beside Canyon. That's awesome. I'm talking about my friend hanging out with Marty Janetti. Random. So cool, you know? Like, these are moments that you will always enjoy, uh, but just live them up. Have fun. But also enjoy the wrestling. Sometimes it is going to feel like it sucks, but it doesn't. It only sucks because you make it suck. So enjoy. Make it fun and enjoyable. God, dude, I was thinking about us, uh, like, some, so like, we'll go a little deep in here, I guess. What's my phone? Oh, my phone is really close to dying. It's on seven. Okay, we're good. Uh, I was thinking, like, some of the spots that we called. Uh, and we can go deep like that, I feel like, right? Like, we can do, talk about spots yeah. and stuff. I don't so, the infrared spots, like, uh, Chris Cronk is, like, the coolest wrestler of all time. So, I had the idea for the toys. Well, besides me, I'm, also, I'm the coolest wrestler of all time, and you're number two. But. Uh, I don't know, whatever. So I had the idea for the wrestling figures, and I thought that was so fucking cool. But then Chris Crock in the back, he pulls out this fucking sock. And not just any sock. He pulls out Mr. Socko. Well, we were going to use that in the fucking infrared match. How do you feel about not using that? And do you wish you'd have used it now? Because I feel like we should have fought. I've got, like, a really big plan for it still. Oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. Then. No, 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 no. I don't care. Like, it's more funnier because, like, then the diehards that watch and listen to this will be like, they'll get it. It's not what I do, like, <laughs> people are going to be like, oh, my God. Yeah, that's awesome. Because <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to use it, like, just all, like, not all the time, but just, like, so random. Like, no, it needs to happen. 100% agree. It needs to happen. 100% what's the point. I was going to use it against Stunt Marshall, but I think we're going to have to have a shoot fight now, so that sucks. But, uh, uh, <laughs> I like Stunt, but can I ask you something? I think we have to have an MMA rules match, but it sucks. I like stunt, but it's not the WWF champion. He's not, dude. He's not. Because I am. And I say. That's such a badass belt, though. Dude, you're telling me. Dude, guess how much I paid for this one. Look at this. It's got the W. The W right here popped me. Because I'm pretty sure on the regular belts, it's just this. Yeah. But the belt right here, blue. <laughs> Did you pay like one twenty five for that or something? One twenty five, and they're all like that. The Ring of Honor belt, one twenty five. The New South belt, one twenty five. I'm it. buying three of them right now. Hang on. Dude, I'm literally gonna buy some Friday. I'm gonna buy probably the Jeff Hardy belt, and I'm going to one hundred twenty five uh, ship dot com. No eBay. <laughs> oh, I'm going to eBay. <laughs> <laughs> the cool thing. Belts though, like you, I don't. Uh, the cool thing about those is they come so quick. Like they lit. I think I ordered the Ring of Honor title on a Tuesday and got it by Friday. Like it was like that quick. Yo, that's sick. Shipping's free right now, dude. This is cool. Let me go on here. Let me tell you what the fuck. Back on eBay. A little technical difficulty there, but uh, we cleaned it up. And so we're looking at these title belts, dude. Uh, one, how funny that this is what we're doing because you guys can't <laughs> see what we're doing. We're just going to be describing it. I'm looking at the blue Universal Championship right now. It's $105, so I just bought three of them. Uh, so that's exciting. You know I'm not buying you. I want, if I get in my fucking account, what the fuck? Hey, that's cool. Either way, I'm not going to do all this bullshit because I can't see it, so it is kind of pointless. But uh, there are a lot of cool belts. I was going to buy the the one I was going to buy before that title. I was going to buy the Taker 1990, the Togan 1990, whatever title. But I was like, man, that WWF like 1999 title really is like the coolest belt ever. I, like as a kid, that was like my favorite belt behind the hardcore title. But now I hate the hardcore title. I don't know. I championship that said world's greatest mom. Oh, let me show you this shit. Wait, what? what you I'm, just I'm just joking. I'm sorry. Okay. Let me show you real quick. So. Uh, Chris Trunk's obviously not a big beer drinker. It's so like, because he doesn't drink alcohol. He's very straight edge. Uh, cool, whatever. But I did. I, we have literally, since it come out, been looking for these. Look at these bad boys. Look at these. I literally just have them for display. Like, I'm not going to drink them. I literally just have them for display. And I think it is the coolest thing of all time. The fucking IPAs, the Stone Colds. Money. Wait, don't use drugs. Eat pizza. Oh, not pizza. But I thought that was so cool. When I saw it, like, literally, let me tell you the story about this real quick. So, walk okay. in the store, Rome, Georgia, of all places. I walk in there. There's this dude who comes up. And we're just talking or whatever. And uh, how did it go? It, he, like, walks up and he's, I'm, like, looking at beer. Because I'm, like, going to get some for AEW Revolution. I'm, like, looking around, looking around, looking around. And he goes, yo, the Stone Cold beer. I was, like, yo. And I, like, I pull it out. And he's, like, the Stone Cold beer? Hell, yeah, whatever. So, I pull him out. And I'm, like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm getting. Blah, blah, blah. And I was, like, oh, you're a wrestling fan. And he was like, yeah. 
And I was like, cool. Do you like go to any shows or anything? And he goes, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like real good friends with this one wrestler. And, you know, we're in Rome, Georgia, like BFB for like a lot of wrestling, maybe like a KOT or whatever, but uh, like BFB for like anything Alabama wrestling. And I was like, well, you know, who do you know? And he goes, do you know Cabana Man, Dan? Why, well, son of a bitch, do I know Cabana Man motherfucking Dan? I'll send you the picture. I'll put the picture on here. That'll be the the picture of the podcast, maybe. I'll probably not. I don't know. Whatever. But uh, so I sent it to Dan because it was just so random because Dan's like obviously the coolest guy ever. But it was just super random. This guy out of Rome, Georgia, knew Cabana Man Dan, who's based in Alabama. And he was like, yeah, he used to because Cabana Man Dan used to like do Pepsi products. He used to like take them around. He'd deliver them to like all these stores. And that's how he knew him. But it was just so funny. And Dan's like, I sent it to Dan and immediately Dan texts back. He's like, oh, cool man, Jay, or something like that. And it was just super random, but super cool. So, yeah, it's my life. My favorite part of that story you just told is you put Cabana Man Dan over so high. You were like, dude, I was in the middle of nowhere and they knew who Cabana Man Dan was. And then you just said it was because he was the Pepsi guy, not because like, he fucking, not because he made such a great name in wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> like you could have left it at this, and okay. everybody and knows how good he is. All right, goddamn it, don't mind. <laughs> That's not a slaw to you, Cabana Man Dan. Let me just say that I love you, CMD. Damn, I should have just dropped it right there. See, that's why I don't know. I don't know when to stop on that. I, I should have oh. left it. He got a belt sign bomb as a kid or something. I like made up this whole bullshit story when he was younger. We'll call but, this. I'm going to call the podcast this episode Pepsi Man Dan. It's going to be <laughs> PFD. Can we get, I have to use the selfie. I have to send you the selfie and we have to use it. It's a, okay. it's a, cool, dude. but the phone, did I, this has been a great, like it started off real shitty. What the fuck just happened? There we go. It started right. off shitty and real boring. I feel like, but I do feel like we've ended this on like such a high note. Yeah. Well, let's wrap it up, dude. Let's fucking send them home happy. You know yeah. what I mean? So, uh, what is your one cool thing for the week? And I'll tell you my cool thing for the week. Uh, dude, the coolest part about this week is I kind of like took a, the, I went to the gym three times this week, but that's it. And, uh, but I was able to jump. Uh, and I know that sounds so stupid as I say it out loud, but since I had that, Ironman match with Tyler Franks, my knee has been obliterated. Let me tell that. I don't know what it was about it. I just have not been able to use it. And so anything I've been doing since then, because I've had many matches since then, it's all in for show, baby. It's all just smoke and mirrors. <laughs> None of this is real. No. I was able to actually jump uh, and plant on my knee and not die. And so I was just like, oh. So, shooting star presses, here I come. Lord <laughs> Screw Moon Sauce with the outside. We'll see you in a minute. That's awesome. What's uh, fuck, dude. I don't know. I, I guess it would be my match with O'Shea. I know it's like such a random one and it's inside of wrestling. But, like, that was very important. And why it's very important to me is to see how different we are from where we were back in 2018. So, me and O'Shea, I think it was, it was either 18 or 19. Me and O'Shea wrestled for New Level Pro. It was one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know if we were the main event, but any match I was in, probably the main event. You know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just fucking around. But uh, it was it was good stuff. So uh, to see, like, that full circle and to see how different we are. Like, last night, dude, so, like, 2018 New Level Pro, like, was top. Like, it was a great show. I mean, really, like, it was balling. It really felt like it was, like, really cool at the time. And it, it's still cool. I don't mean it, like, a diss way, but, like, I feel like we were really making waves at that point. Balled out. Fast forward to 2023, me and O'Shea Edwards, completely two different superstars. I've done a lot of, like, okay stuff, but this has been on, like, Ring of Honor. Like, he's done, like, a lot of, like, super sick stuff, you know, and, like, to see where he's gone. Uh, we wrestled, and it was so, like, different. The first time, it was just, like, neither one of us, like, O'Shea had a mindset, but it was not anywhere near what it is now, you know? And I was just, how can I make no sense wrestling? And I'm still, like, a nonsense wrestler. I don't really give a fuck, but, like, completely different than how it was last night. So then uh, we wrestled, and in New Level, that was probably 50 people. Last night, dude, IWTV Live, which is not a flex, but, like, that's cool to me, you know? And then we're in front of probably, I want to legit say probably about five, 500, not a lot, but, like, a solid crowd, you know? And we hate Kevin. I got heat of the building, and we don't do anything. Like, I did, like, a sick fucking blockbuster on the top, and he did this thing that was, like, he held me in up. You say, you know the Oklahoma Slam where you run dude into the post, ten like, like Batista used to do. You'd run him to the post, run him to the post, power slam. 
Oh, yeah. Well, he was like, dude, what if I do that 10 times? And I was like, I think that's money because, like, it works and it's a cool moment and it's a cool gift. All right, regardless, like, that's my that's my moment of the week. I didn't mean to blabber about it, but it was so cool just talking to him and seeing how different our mindsets were. So that's my moment of the week. That's awesome. I yep. love that. And I love Osho. So, yep. Uh, so, I also found the worst looking title I've ever seen in my life, and I'm so happy. What is it? Um, <laughs> I don't know if I can put my camera on my head. Oh, no. I don't think I can. Oh, here it is. There. It is. This Rocky. <laughs> Dude, I'm buying this thing and wearing it out every week. <laughs> okay, let me tell you a fucking little history lesson about the photo. Are you ready? Are you ready? Kevin Ross. Debuts. 14 years old. Eight-sided ring. Kevin Ron versus Matt Devlin. Right? For a title. And I win this belt. And you know what belt it was? It was that title right there. Longest reigning rising star champion of all time since 2014. I haven't dropped almost 10 years. When you know, there's a lot of like dope champions out there, but have you ever heard of a decade long champion? Bruno who? Here? Kevin motherfucking probably gonna be in the Hall of Fame run. How about that? How about That's that? Awesome. Three years old. That's awesome. Uh, but as we leave here, we're going to, me and Chris, we're going to play a game to where I'll say a bar, like I'll say a line and then Chris Crunk says a bar and we'll go back and forth with it because that's just what we're doing. All right. Yo. <laughs> I said, what y'all trying to do? We on eBay getting titles. It's because we're going to take it to the next show. You know, we put on the miles. Oh. I said there's a tons of shitbirds out there, and I'm talking piles and piles. But it doesn't matter who we wrestle because you know the kids will be given the smiles and smiles. He'd be given the smiles, but we were gracing with style. <laughs> come on, come on. Go, keep it going, keep it going. It doesn't matter if it's Nick Cannon or Infrared, dude. You know we always wild. Wild. But if we but we ain't gonna keep it lean, we're gonna keep it chunky like sauce and mild. Dude, and we don't care if you come at us. We'll smack you back down like a child. Damn. Smack you down like a child. Oh, like, damn. Smack you down, but we got the titles. <laughs> but we... <laughs> well, fuck that shit. We making money. We get tips. Because Kevin Ryan and Chris Crump are the holders of the New South goddamn tag team championships. Hold that motherfucker up right now. Hold that motherfucker. Let me switch this motherfucker. God damn. Um, so we ain't losers and we're not bums. But as John Cena said in 05, if you want some, come get some. You yes, sir. Them, you done it now. Oh, gone and made a big mistake. Bye, guys.